Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Yvette Jacobson. I am a early riser baseball club of Detroit baseballist. That's what I was told was the correct term to you. So that's um, that's where I'm from. And I've just completed my first year as a VBBA trustee and uh, going to be presenting uh, to you guys on a project that I've been working on. It's something that I felt that we needed to more focus more on. And other people have said, hey, let's do this. Uh, I'm a horrible speaking presentator person, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm gonna read my, my notes here and uh, tell, you about, tell you about the program. Okay, um, first of all, the mission of the VBBA is to preserve, perpetuate, and promote the game of baseball as it was played during its formative years in the 19th century and other historic eras. That's the short version. There's a bit, little bit more to it if you read the entire thing. Um, but think about how are you doing that in your clubs? Are you doing all three? Are you preserving baseball with what you do? Are you perpetuating it? Are you promoting it? Did you even know those words were in the mission statement? No, I didn't, honestly. Not until I became a trustee, so. So think about that. If you're not doing these things, why aren't you doing these things? And don't feel bad about why you're not doing it because you just don't know how. Um, think about what, what, what has stopped you before? What has held you back from getting out and promoting? So those, those problems right there is what I've developed into a proposal to help clubs work with historical societies. And it's different. Um, okay, well, I'm just gonna keep reading my thing because okay, I, I don't. So you work with the club in Michigan. Yep. You work with the school in Pennsylvania. How is it different between those two clubs or those three clubs? Well, um, there's two different sides to this. There is, I want to, I have a club, an idea for a club, I want to do a club, but I have no help, I have no bodies, I have no support, no funding, what do I do? There's going to be two parts to this proposal. The first one is already up on, is it up on the website yet? It's going to be up on the website and it's accessible to anybody who sees the website. And what it does is it gives you a tool to approach a museum or a historical site or a historic preservation association in your area and it gives you a, a more comfortable way of going in and saying, hey, would you like to partner with us? Then what I'm working on now currently is going to be the second part of the, pres of the uh, proposal is so that you have a club, you're doing great, but like in Florida, which is where I'm, my, one of my next projects, um, you might not have anybody to play. So what are you gonna do there? So the second part of the proposal is going to be a marketing packet that you will take or send in to whoever is in charge of a historical society or museum. And they're gonna see what other clubs have done and how other clubs have benefited working with historical societies and how other museums have benefited by having a club. And so that way, you're gonna be able to work with them to help them create a club, and now you have someone to play. So, um, okay, so again, why is it important? Why is it important to work with a historical society? We know that it's to help get donations, get funding, get other people to play. Um, <laughs> so, okay, first of all, what do we do every day to fulfill our Vintage Baseball Association mission statement and our own club's mission statements? Um, we're a hand, it's a handmade commitment to telling history. That's what we're doing. 
Um, you can't go to Subway and have them sponsor your team and have them put the word Subway on the back of your uniform. It doesn't happen that way. So what else are you supposed to do? So this is a handmade commitment to telling history. Uh, it's not cheap. Sometimes you can get sponsors. Sometimes you can get donations from family members, work places. They can give you money because you can't, you know, it's something that you don't see. But you need it, so that works. Um, but those other areas that the money can't buy is what this proposal is going to be helping people do. It's beyond the material needs of the club. Um, every partnership with a historical society is not going to be 100% perfect every time. That's just how it is. But when a club comes to me and says, hey, can we use this proposal? And they take it and they go to a historical society and they get shot down, then go to another one. You need to put yourself out there. You need to market yourself out there. Um, so um, there's more reasons to give it a shot than not to. Uh, but like any relationship, you're going to be building trust. You have to work towards your common goals. Uh, but you still have to keep your identity. So I'll get to that, why that's a, a certain situation later. Um, at the same time, you are allowed to expect a certain give and take. This is going to be a partnership with your historical society that you find. That word is what's important. When, when, uh, when someone comes to me to start a new club, they say, Evie, how can I recruit players? You're not recruiting players. You're getting club members. So go to a historical society. You can't walk in and say, I need this much money. Will you help me? No, of course they're not going to do that. They, you have to pr approach it in a way that they see, well, what am I going to get out of it? So it's a partnership. Um, I've been involved with many clubs over the years. Uh, some that have worked with historical societies worked out great. Some of them, it's beautiful, perfect working relationships. They have a field. They have the food given to them after the match. It's great. And then, of course, there's the rest of us don't have that. And if you don't do it yourself, if you don't find your own field or your own food, you know, it's hard work. It's hard work to do that. So you need help to do that sometimes. Um, so over the years, I've observed this, what it's like to work with one, what it's like to not. Um, I've talked to the people at these museums. I've talked to the players, talked to the coaches, talked to everybody. Which, you know, well, why are you not doing this? What's the reason you're not? What can we do about it? Um, so... Even myself, uh, by the way, my women's baseball club failed. It wasn't about the historical society, but I've been a member. I've been in charge of a club that failed. It's not good. It's not a good thing, you know. So we don't want that. Um, we've all we've all been there. Uh, it seems like a great idea one day to wake up and say, "Oh my God, you guys, let's start a vintage baseball club. Cool idea. Yeah, wouldn't it be great?" Well, yeah, that's how they start. Sure. Two months later, uh, you realize all of the work that goes into it. You're exhausted. It's overwhelming. You're frustrated. You're trying to pull some bodies together for a match or maybe two, hopefully more. Um, but after struggling, you just, you're like, I'm done. I'll just go play on another team because I'm done. So that's, again, something that we want to stop having happen. There's no reason why we, we should see that happening. Um, so all this experience is what led to me to create this proposal. Um, it's specifically targeted towards taking your new club and marketing it, marketing it to local historical societies to form a community-driven and prosperous partnership. So note, note the word partnership. That's, you, you, you gotta think about those words and start using them, like instead of the recruiting getting club members. Think about that. Um, it's a concept that's really hard to think about. You Think about your own relationships. Every relationship is a partnership. 
It's no different as baseball. So uh, now historical societies, they're not used to people coming in and just, um, well, what they're used to, it's, it's, it's a donation that, it's, a, it's a, like a needy thing, it's, it, and it's, it's fair. They expect people are gonna come in and donate time. They're gonna come in and donate money. So that being one of the problems, why when you approach a historical society to say, hey, can we get some help? They have to say no. They, the first thing they think of is, uh, we don't have $5,000 to build a baseball team. That, because it's not their normal way of thinking. You can't just scare them off right off the bat like that. <clears throat> um, well, okay, yeah. I don't know if anyone started it that way. That's how we started. Tried it that way. Oh, there you go. We started from the the OS to the Ohio Historical Society decided to make a baseball team. Oh. And because they wanted to represent what they were doing, so someone in there had an idea and they did it and we developed it. And thirty say thirty eight years later, almost forty years later we're still around. Yeah. That's and, awesome. You know, Yeah. <clears throat> oh, um, no, that's great. I, I, other than you then, I have not heard, I've always had other teams coming up to me with problems about what do I do, how do I do I it. I work with the people that work in the historical society and see, get them interested in doing it. Right, and, so. And they're the ones suggesting. When you go in with your proposal packet, you're gonna be wearing your uniform. You're gonna say, hi, I'm so-and-so, and, -so, and well, hey. Say, <laughs> they use that red uniform, and, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. We pay, we pay for our own. They don't pay for anything. And, that, and that's what people need to realize, too, even us as players. The Historical Society is not going to give you everything you need. They can't. <coughs> so don't expect that. That's why it, the proposal is set up so that you understand what you're going to be asking for and what they're going to be asking you for. It's fair. Um, <clears throat> you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. That's what it's going to be. Uh, be, and again, with the overhead, we're a handmade hobby. Uh, overhead can be low if you have craftsmen on your team making all of your bats and your balls and your uniforms and everything. Um, but it can be pretty high if you have nobody that can do any of that stuff. Do you have a field? Forget about the field. That was, that's like the next concern when a club says, hey, I want to I want to start a team up. Okay, good, do you have a field? Oh, wait, what? You know, okay, so now you need help finding a field. You may need somebody to get a permit for you to play at a field that you want. Can you, do you know how to do that yourself? Maybe, maybe not. Um, you need the exposure. Uh, you need to get the word out. Get the word out that your club is looking for members, that the club even existed, that the, there's a history in this town about a club. You need the exposure. You need access to their research, their research libraries and what they know about the town that you're starting your club in. Um, or how to get that information, because if you just wake up and want to start a club, do you know where to go to an archive and find out if you had a club that really existed at that time? So you have the, the research uh, resources. These are the things that make what we do, a true living history experience. So it's way more than just the money. It's all these other things. It's the exposure, getting out there. Uh, the sideline interpreting. Do you have enough extra bodies to have people do a sideline interpreting at your match to go out and work with the crowd? How about umpires? It'd be nice to have extra people like that. Um, 
So those are the those those are what make having all of those aspects to your club is what makes or breaks the success and the longevity of the club. Um, that's what I've gathered from you know from all the <coughs> clubs that I've been exposed to. Now there's also problems. I, I asked before I did this present or the proposal. So what are the what are the things that prevent you from going to a historical society? What are the problems you run into? Apparently, there's two major problems that stop people from approaching for help. Historical societies may end up micromanaging your situation. You might feel like you sold your soul. Um, and the other problem is obtaining their interest. If, if they don't come at you, say we're interested for people, you gotta keep them interested. Um, so those seem to be, from what I've gathered, the, the biggest problems that prevent people from doing this. So here's the, what the proposal includes. I brought a copy of it. Now, I did use this to help a new club in Michigan start. They were um, they're from what originally was a town called Nankin. Now it's called Garden City. Um, so they are the Straight Farmhouse Baseball Club of Nankin. And at the same time I was putting this proposal together last fall was when I was approached by their captain about, hey, I want to work with this museum. My town has a museum and I want to do baseball. And okay, perfect. So when, when you get this off of the internet, off of our website. I'm going to print copies and report this out and have it shipped before. Okay. Oh, excellent. Thank you. You get a cover page. This is customizable, so it's a Word document. You're going to download it, put your name on the top. The pictures are already there. That's what's going to grab the people's attention. They want to see what does vintage baseball look like, and ooh, that's a cool ball. That's what gets their attention. So we got marketing done right there. There's a spot to put the year of your club. You have to pick a year. We know this. 1860 apostrophe S is not a year. Pick a year. Get your education material together so you can explain to them what does 1860 mean as opposed to 1861 as far as baseball. So get your stuff together. Um, you get a letter. Dear new club member or dear new club manager, you get a letter from me um, also explaining all the pages of the proposal and what would be expected to complete it. Um, it also comes with my coaching for life I guess as long as you can find me after I'm not a trustee anymore, I guess. Um, but if you run into a problem, and, and we did. We ran into situations doing this with the Nankin Club. Like, oh, no, this happened. What do I do? Okay. You're going to calm down. We're going to get some more information on the problem, and this is what you're going to do. So I'm going to coach you through it if you have a problem with this, anything that comes up, because things happen. So you got my guarantee on that. First page is the actual proposal. So before you, when you get to this point, you've woken up in the morning, you said, I want to start a vintage baseball club. You put together your mission statement. You figure out the year of your club, if you're going to reproduce an original club, are you going to make up a new club because there was no clubs. The proposal page is where you're going to fill in the blanks of what it is you are proposing. Your needs might be different than the Nankin Club was. So this one I'll read to you. This proposal is to, name of historical society, for consideration of a living history reproduction baseball club from, year of the team, which from here on out will be referred to as the club. So right away, the, the language of this proposal is the words that we use. Because it's easy to say, oh, I meant, say team, oh, I meant club. You want the people at the Historical Society to start realizing the language that we use. So throughout the rest of the proposal, the club. They get that now. Um, which from here on out will be referred to as the club until a proper name has been decided on. If you have a name at that point, then put that in there. If you don't, you don't need a name to start this process. That's the point, too. You can get this going. Then you have to put your mission here. The mission of the club is whatever your mission statement is. 
The club will not only offer a glimpse into the history of the game and how it became America's pastime, but also into the life of 19th century America here in our own community. So that right there, they're seeing, oh, you're gonna help promote history too? Oh, that's great, that's exactly what we need. Nobody's promoting our museum. There you go, now they're interested in that partnership. <clears throat> the club will also work with uh, the name of your historical society, so whatever museum, to promote our local history and help to educate the public who from here on out will be referred to as spectators. So now you got that interaction happening. What's a spectator? Why are they called spectators? Uh, to help educate the public and the spectators with traditions of our cultural past here in whatever city I'm in. So they, write, they know you're serious now. You're in, a, in it for history. You're not in it for a softball team with funny uniforms. This is what we're preventing. This is what is gonna make or break that. The next page is the specific aims of this proposal. So the first one is portrayal and education of the original method with which baseball was played in whatever year. Uh, the second one, portrayal of 19th century life in our own community. Now if you're a 1920 baseball club, then change the year and adjust accordingly for your needs. Um, bullet points there, those can all be adjusted to what it is that your specific aims are, what you need from the society. Promoting the local history of the people in your area, so you're gonna put the town, and you, you have to think about what are you gonna do to help promote that, be in a parade, uh, go to special events that the museum has. This is where you're saying all the stuff that is gonna be done between you and the museum. Then you're going to put in there the uniform. Um, you're gonna pick out what your uniform's gonna look like. And this is so that they know what it is they're getting into. Um, maybe they can help you pay for it, maybe not. That's what you're gonna hash out afterwards. But they need to understand. You have a uniform. And you explain exactly what it is. When I, when I consult with clubs to start, one thing that I'm really passionate about is what is the history of your area? If you were not representing an original club that existed like the Cincinnati Reds, if you're an original farm club, what was that culture like? Make your uniform based on that culture. If, they were, if it was a Scottish village of immigrants from you know, Scotland in 1840 and they're still there, put some, maybe you can put some Scottish tartan accessories on somewhere. And that's very important for the community that the museum's in. So you're gonna be explaining that. Now also, if you need help designing a uniform, I will do that as well. I can draw up the picture, I can tell you what it would look like for that year. We pick out the colors, you can show them that. They like to see pretty pictures. You got that going too. Um, this page, the assistance, assistance partnership sponsorship, and it actually says what the club is asking of the society. So we are gonna do all of these six pages for you. This is all we need in return. Oh, just this little page right here. This is where you are honestly going to tell them what it is you need. If you need help buying balls, you say, I need help buying balls. And they're gonna look at it and say, well, we can't do two dozen, but we can do like one dozen. Okay, now you hash out all the details. But you have to be upfront when you're asking for anything, you have to be upfront. So that's the first proposal. Um, so when I, I, it, I went live with it earlier this year with the Straight Farmhouse Baseball Club. Um, and like I said, it happened where he came back to me with problems and situations. We worked it out. He went back, uh, solved the problems. They're working now together. And he's actu it's actually going better than I thought because I just assume everything is I, I'm, a, I'm a realist so everything's bad until I see that it's good I just can't assume you know so but they're doing really well working together and it worked out and everything that has been tweaked into this proposal is what they have said to him and what other museums have said so you shouldn't have problems going through this with them you might but that's fine you know um, 
So, okay, so that's the first part of the, of the proposal that we did. Now the second part, that's what I said, you need another club to play. And you know that the town next door had a club in 1840, and they have a museum. And nobody in the town wants to start a club, you tried. You tried and tried and tried to talk to people, nobody gives any care about it. So now you're gonna have a marketing tool to take to a museum. Uh, you might remember I did that contest in our January newsletter um, where I wanted club captains who worked with historical societies to give me the down and dirty on is it good, is it bad, what works, what does not. Um, I got four responses. So how are we all not working with historical societies? Somehow, we don't all have to, but four? How many clubs do we got in the VBBA? This is a problem, okay, so that's why we're, we're going ahead with phase two. Um, that one is not active yet. Uh, what I need to do is do the same contest to the historical societies. So the captains that gave me their responses to the, the questionnaire that I put out now I'm going to go to the person that they work with at their museum and ask them the same thing. What's good about working with them? What's not good about working with them? And they're going to understand that this is to help us figure out how to make it work. So once I get my feedback from them, then you're going to see a new, another proposal out to do that. So that one is still in the works. Um, the other part of my presentation is about how I'm helping other clubs in the, in the country. Um, so if I'm not, I'm, I'm not a creator of clubs. That's not my job, that's not what I do. That's what you guys do. That's what you ask your friends to do and get going. Um, but I've been with many clubs, seen everything that works, seen what does not, and through the, with the VBBA, we determined there's areas in the country where this is just lacking, and it could be better. And it should be better, there's no reason. Why do we have 30 clubs in Detroit, one in Florida, one in Colorado, Texas, now we have you. So yay, we have Texas. So why, why is that not happening? And it's because the people that have started the clubs don't know what to do. They wake up in the morning and say, hey, oh my gosh, it's so cool. Let's start a vintage baseball club. So what do you do? You don't, you know, it's not gonna happen overnight. I've been doing personal consultations with clubs that have approached me and said, how do we do this? And I say, well, what's your problem? What's the situation? What are your goals? So in, it, this is not a set in stone project like the proposal. This is a one on one consultation thing that I'm doing to help clubs get going. Um, Western Pennsylvania, we worked really well together there. Um, I check in every so often to see how they're doing. So far no complaints. They started up a new club and they're working together with uh, their brother clubs that are in the area. Part of the consultation is if you have clubs in your other area, why are you not working together? There's ways to do that. Um, or they didn't even know they had a club. Whatever the problem is that you're having starting your club, we, we're gonna hash out how to fix it and how to move forward. Oh, so and then now Florida. Florida apparently had more than one club at some time, but now they only have one and they wanna expand, they want more. So I consulted with the guys that are doing this. Um, they didn't know how to get club members. They didn't have vintage, they didn't have 1860s baseball. They have baseball in 1880s, it started then, but there was no good history of it that they had. So where are they gonna, where are they gonna find clubs? They have to make them up. That's fine if you do it right. So, but, being in the southern half of the United States at the Civil War, they had a lot of Civil War reenacting going on. They have different battlefields. They have, I would have to look at the list they gave me, but they went out, I said, okay, here's what we're gonna do. 
we're going to portray vintage baseball from the soldier's point of view. Nobody's done that yet. Why not? We talk about it. This is the perfect opportunity. They have no original clubs to reproduce. So gave them their homework assignment, and they did great. They came back to me with, OK, we're, there's this, there's this, there's this. We're going to work the next thing on, uh, I have to see where they are right now with it, but moving into getting this proposal going for them because they went to a museum. They actually have a museum at a town that, that uh, honors the first baseball field they had in Florida. Okay. You know, so that's where this is going. So you want a club, you need a club, something. You have a club that's struggling. Come to me, we're going to consult, we're going to figure out what to do to make it better. Then you're going to have the tools to go out and build it. So I could go again, I guess, over the list of the pros of doing it. Yeah, let's do that, why not? So some historical societies are a 501c3 organization. What does that mean? That means if you partner with them, here's something, okay, this is what it means that uh, I didn't even know. You have the ability to submit grant proposals through a 501c3. I did not know this. So right there, if go out and find one that is a 501c3 and see if they can help you. Um, that one, that idea came from California, from Matt Stone out there. He is, he is the one rare occurrence where you can just walk into a museum and say, hey, want to start a baseball club? And they're like, heck yeah, we do. We're California. We want to be cool at something. Let's do it. Okay, that's like the only time ever that that would happen. So, I don't know. But, um, and then even rare for them to come to you. That's, that's the cool one. I like that. Uh, the exposure, they put out, they can put out press releases, they can advertise on the social media for you. The Nankin, the Nankin Club has a beautiful write-up on the museum page of, for the Straight Farmhouse Museum. They did a whole page that even explains vintage baseball. Do you have a, do you have a website of your own? Well, you could get that if you had a partner. So, um, they can do the literature for you. They're going to put you out in the community. They're going to say, hey, we have a town festival. We need some entertainment. How about you guys go play? You got any friends that can play? You got another team you can play? So now the other team's getting exposure too. We got to, this is what we have to do is get our exposure out there. That, that's basically what's happening that, um, is out there and then the other half that is going to be available shortly for everybody. So we didn't, we didn't even know with our um, with the uh, board that we're members of, but somebody flew our board and knew of our uh, baseball team and uh, they ended up throwing us on billboards. We end up on big yeah. billboards in here ah. that are just around our uh, around the city of Detroit. I was um, wondering if those were they're still yeah, going on. Still there. And part of it is starting the conversation. You don't think you can go talk to these people. You, you can and you should. But then if you ever need, when I was teaching, I had a vintage baseball game in my school, okay? And the girls and guys had skirts for the girls, everything. They did everything the right way. And then after that, I got people that loved the game, but then they got away from it when we moved on to the high school. But, you know, I'm not sure. I've had other teachers say they're interested, but <coughs> if you ever need any teacher to help someone who wants to do that in a school to start interest, if you want to, you can send them, you know, just email them to me. Yeah, because that'd be I great. Because I started it from nothing. And that's the thing. It's not really just historical society. It's whoever's interested in your community, 
and your town and has resources that would be able to do this and see the potential from both sides. Teachers should be able to do that, especially during the Civil War when they speak about it, because it was played. Yep. And it's even on movies now that they play Civil War yeah. baseball. So that's what that's what this is all about. So if you guys look me up, um, uh, I don't know all my contact information on the website, Facebook, whatever. Let me know if you need help and tell everyone this is what we're doing. Uh, yeah, questions? Yes? Oh no. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
So that would be something that I would add. When I put the next list, the next uh, questions out, what motiv what's motivating these societies that are already working with clubs, what's motivating them to be so involved? That's what you're looking for is the motivation that they have. That's probably what confuses them. Well, They're expecting you to say, hey. That's, that's probably what's throwing them off. They figure you don't need us. Why should we be there? Everyone needs us for money. It's, it's all the different way that people think. Like it's, You have to think, how would your friend think? If I didn't need anything from my friend, they wouldn't be my friend. That's the problem. People think you need them for the material side. You need them for the non-material stuff, and that's what we're going to work through, yeah. Well, I think the letter that you have, uh, that I could possibly get together, and I really could, it might be during the winter next year, the same year, but I live close to the Capitol, so that's the easy one. I plan on keeping the uh, club for a few years. Right. And you'll see that you can customize it. So where it says we need help buying materials and stuff, we need help with your presence. And they'll say, oh my gosh, great, you don't need money. We can do this. So yeah, you're going to customize it to what you need. And they'll, that's what they want to know right up front. Right. Yeah, and that, that's the thing is getting past that. If you don't know someone, how are you, you going to get the, the help from these? Yeah. Yeah. And that's how I got a lot of members. And I finally have a backing of the Charge of Justice Convention and Visitors Bureau that has a display in there. But, but if you can come, if you can think of off the top of your head, or get something, you know how to get something. 
Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, that's, that's something that they're not getting. Yeah, that's something that, I mean, when, when people go straight to Free the, advertisement. Uh, people go straight to the historical society and stay there, you know, big deal. When you take that historical society out to the rest of the world, that's kind of, that really is a big deal. Yeah. And we travel with that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree everything what he just said, except that the reverse of that is purpose. You know, we, we, we advertise that t-shirts, everything we do has the logo of the Ohio History Connection. But also, we're the face of the Ohio History Connection. Yep. When people look out there, they know us. They go, oh, the muffins from, from the Ohio History. They don't know anything else about the Ohio History, mm -hmm. but they know the muffins. And we've been marching parades. They know it's the Ohio History Connection. Yeah. When someone sees an early riser walking through Meyer because he needs a bag of ice for a game, they're going to also say, oh, you're from where? A fort in Detroit? What's that? Yeah, we are the, you know, we, when did we you get a new fort? We, we've always we had it. It's original. Wonder, <laughs> what do you do? And, that's, and everywhere we go, we have that. And we are the face of it. Yeah. so much for them. They get state funding because of that. Mm -hmm. And so they, the state sees you and your presence in so many different places. The state says, well, maybe we should be cutting that. Yep, yep. So. Sure.
if basically, yeah, you have to. And honestly, if you're not having luck with this one society, why don't you try another one? That's what I want to hear. I mean, we came to a colony. So hmm. I've had difficulties with getting money for colony because mm-hmm. we don't play in colony. We play school of time, okay? And I try to promote that. And I was in a music array in Athens for 15 years. <coughs> Yeah. Yeah. You know, trying to work with them. Yeah, no, hopefully the second phase is what's going to solve that because that's a good question for me to add to what I'm going to be sending to yeah, the successful you know, ones. Every everywhere there's a problem everywhere, every situation's unique, you know, yeah, and that's Oh, yeah, no, that's great. Because everything I look at here, we do all our one through five. We've done that since day one. Oh, did you have a question? Yeah. I, oh, good. I do. I'm, I'm new. I don't know you. That's why I'm, I said, oh, good. I'm Travis Bowley. I just drove down. I happened to see <laughs> you guys online about a week ago. I'm from Independence, Missouri. Oh. I just put on a history conference two 
weeks ago called Truman and the Trail, about Harry Truman and the Oregon Trail. Um, I won't go into all the details of why those two things are interrelated, but um, I'm sure both of you have heard of Alexander Cartwright. Yeah. Alexander Cartwright was a 49er, um, in addition to being with the Knickerbocker Baseball Club. And I helped the woman that wrote this book research this, and I, I like this quote from Independence in April of 1849. During the past week, we passed the time in fixing the wagon covers, stowing away property, varied by hunting, fishing, swimming, and playing baseball. I have the ball and the book of rules with me that were used in forming the Knickerbocker Baseball Club back home in 1845. Long story short, Cartwright wound up in San Francisco. By 1851, a half a dozen Knickerbockers were in San Francisco and started baseball there. We just did this Truman and the Trail Symposium. It was very successful. I've been charged with trying to create a baseball in the trail symposium now. We do our symposium in Independence every other year, so in two years we'll be doing this. I've also talked to the director of the community relations of the Kansas City Royals about potentially partnering up on something like that. So I just took a flyer, drove down here, it took me about three and a half hours, just hoping to meet some people. I happen to sit next to some folks from Wichita, which turns out to be pretty nice. They're just three hours away, and hopefully I can meet some of the, the rest of you throughout the rest of this afternoon. Maybe I'll kind of be in and out, but I'm excited to know that you guys exist. I didn't know. Um, just found you online by accident. Just doing research actually on the Knickerbockers. See, there you go. So I'm here. I just kind of throw that out. So I'd love to talk with some of you. Thanks. Thank you. No, thank you for letting us know. Yeah. All right. If no, there's any other questions, are you okay over there, Texas? Did you take notes? Yep. All right. We're going to be talking in the future, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's all I got. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>